As a trucker, you've kept our country going during the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that you take your role seriously. And without you, America would have shut down. The team at Rev wants to say thank you for having our backs every day. We also know that keeping costs down is your number one goal. That's why at Rev Insurance, our priority is helping you save money while keeping you safe on the road. Call 800-347-5373 and let the trucking experts at Rev assist you with a free trucking insurance quote and save up to 37%. Wow. Rev specializes in providing insurance of all types to small fleet owners and independent owner operators, whether local, short haul, or long haul. Rev Insurance can get you covered at a price that fits your budget. From liability, damages, and cargo to workers' compensation, Rev has your back while you're out there on the road. Call 800-347-5373 or visit www.revinsurance.com. That's 800-347-5373. Rev Insurance. They know truckers because they only work with truckers. Hey, everybody out there in trucker land, it's Talk CDL Ruth Ann. We are on the show live. Well, live recording. <laughs> I don't think, I think that's an oxymoron. I mean, we could do it live more often, but we don't. We just more record it. But anyways, we are here. It's actually today Sunday. It is. Yeah, and we normally have it already recorded for the week, the show, but we're kind of running a little bit late. A couple of things I wanted to mention. I chipped my tooth today. Yes, you did. In church? Mm-hmm. It's really weird. It's like the back of my tooth, you know, the, the bottom tooth where your tongue rests against, which, of course, the most inconvenient tooth. It's like the one to the right, but not to your, va- you know, the little vampire tooth, I call them the little... The fangy ones, the ones <laughs> that have the little point. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about, right? Not the fangy, but the one to the left of that, like in the front. That, the top back part of it chipped off, right, while taking communion. And I, I, don't, I don't, it's the weirdest feeling because it feels like it's a razor now. And every time my tongue touches it, it feels like it's being sliced. That's because teeth are very sharp like that. Well, it's sharper, I can tell you that. But anyways, that's that's my that's been my day in case in case anybody really cares. You know, truck drivers don't care about that. No. They're like pussy. Pussy. Sitting at home all week long I'm out here driving a truck and you chip your little toothy. Oh, poor Droy. I'm serious, that's I guarantee you ninety percent of them are saying that right now. It's I, like that. I if I was ba- think if I, the same thing. So you think the same thing. <laughs> but if I was back on the road, I would say that. Mm-hmm. To whoever sound like a little whiny girl on the mic, so and that's why I didn't go. Oh my tooth! I just said my my tooth. Yeah, he it wanted to say oh my tooth. No, it didn't hurt. I like I'm it not. It doesn't hurt, but it I'm bothers. I'm complaining him. about the the feeling of my tongue being sliced every time. But you know what? I'll tough it up and call a dentist tomorrow. Anyways, so uh, trucking, trucking, trucking. That's what we do. Trucking. We got a couple things we want to talk about today. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we uh, before we get started, there's a a new venture Toxedio has has uh, been approached. Been, ap- been approached by uh, TNC Radio out of Houston, Humboldt, mm-hmm. or something like that. I think mm-hmm. they said Humboldt, mm-hmm. which is the the Houston area. And they're like an internet radio. I think it's like twenty four seven. Most of the time, they're live. And they got this huge trucker following, so we wanted to mention TNC Radio on... Uh, actually, I actually want to try to mention them a lot, but if you truck drivers are out there, you don't have to be in the Houston area to listen to these guys. They got a lot of trucker interviews. They got a lot of trucking things that they do. If you go on their webpage, they have a lot of uh, uh, like apps and things like that for truckers that they, they do. It's, it's basically a trucker radio station. And right. Yeah. I mean, it sounds pretty cool. But anyways, they're going to be playing some Talk CDL podcasts, you know, on uh, their radio show. They're going and I think they'll they'll have other podcasts, other trucking podcasts. Mm-hmm. They're going to be playing like uh, I think once a day, you know, uh, a different podcast will probably be played to uh, what's the uh, host name? What's her name? Shelly. Shelly, and then she has a show she's doing that'll be live. So it'll be kind of like a, an opener for her. 
So tune into TNC, everybody, and check them out. Yeah. What do you think? And of yeah, and it's nationwide, so it's not just, you know, drivers feel like they, like you said, you don't have to be in the Houston area, but it is completely nationwide. Yeah, I mean, I think they have thousands of truckers following them and downloading their stuff, or not mm-hmm. downloading, but listening live. Mm-hmm. So you can you can be going down the radio and just click on to their, their channel and uh, play it right through your radio, and you have a dedicated team that's trying to cater to the trucking industry. Right. So check them out. T, what's it? TNC. Tom, Correct. Nikki, Charles, TNC Radio. Is it dot .com also right there? Is that what it is? I don't know. We should probably give them the address. You know, that would be that would be kind of rude of us to mention. And then, oh, here it is right here. So, yeah, TNC Radio dot live. Wow. Imagine if we sent them to com. They'd be like, we were over to com one. <laughs> I went to that damn com and I just never found it. So we left it. TNC.com. Doesn't even exist. <laughs> it's TNC Live, guys. L-I-V-E. So you got to go to www.tncradio.live. Don't put the com on there. Hey, drivers, are you thinking about becoming a lease operator? Well, NCI is leasing out one to two-year-old Kenworth T680 double bunk condo tractors, fully loaded with APU and fridge, plus the company is owned by their own product. That's right. They deliver mainly their own freight, which means your business will be thriving for a long time to come. 844-311-7076. That's 844-311-7076. 7076 and tell them talk CDL sent you. Please, thank you. Seriously, when I started the internet, Ruth Ann, back in the day, I'm like, how the hell do you send an email? You know, like you, you learn little bits and pieces at a time. And then when they started like adding on to the dot com, dot org, dot net, I'm like, uh oh. It it's, just it, it threw a curveball. It just went crazy. It went up a notch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I, uh, Check them out, TNC Radio dot live, and, and and what's cool about it is it's it's about us, you know, not a t, uh, not talk CDL, but trucking. It's about all our brothers and sisters and all our good stuff. So check those guys out, and uh, if you call in, tell them that you heard about them on Talk CDL. Yeah, and you can still listen to the podcast too. There. So I was reading, like you know, how we get a lot of a lot of notes and letters and emails and stuff from people. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I think we had mentioned this guy in the show before because he said we mentioned him. So I I. I <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, we mentioned people all the time, so, but we mentioned him. So I mentioned him again. His name's Theo Camacho. Sounds like a fighter, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Macho Camacho or whatever. Anyways, Theo Camacho. And he, here's what he wrote. He, he writes, I'm located in Washington State. I work for Schneider National as a local Schneider intermodal driver. So he's doing containers off the uh, rail yards. And it says, just a little background of myself, and I really look forward to to the old cast reunion. So we had already, we should mention we're getting a, maybe a Christmas special this year together. We've got, already talked to Rich and he's all, he's going to be on the show. I've already talked to Diesel. Diesel's all pumped up. He's going to uh, make a, a, an appearance on the show. So we've got him. I haven't talked to a couple of the other ones, uh, but I wouldn't mind getting acid on. We He's alive now again, isn't he? Or is he still dead? Dead. He was alive the other day, but he was dead for like a couple weeks. I think, unfortunately, he's alive. He is alive. Okay, so maybe we'll get acid on the show. And uh, hopefully you guys will like that show coming up. Um, here He writes also, he says, Hope you all have a great day. And to Ruth Ann, I hope your birthday went well, went amazing, and wish you all happiness, blessing ahead of you. So they're still wishing you a damn happy birthday, Ruth Ann. It's like a month later. It's not quite a month. Yeah, it is. Just no, about. Not, like yeah. Thanksgiving is like coming up. It's okay. still a, a week out. Three nice. weeks. Three weeks but ago was your birthday. Well, I still am getting, I, I sent Debbie. Did she send you a message back? Because oh. I sent her a message. The lady that guessed my age, I sent her a message asking her about the shirt and the hat. So I, oh, the lady. That's right. You, you, you're you getting, that's right. Yeah. So, guys and gals, when we give out t-shirts and hats, always remember it's going to be late. Just if you yeah, get, I don't yeah. I can't rush that. I have we have like other jobs and like yeah, I have a but we do we, we do also feel for you when, when you don't get it right away because you're thinking they forgot me. No, and, I don't I don't I didn't I'm forget. the biggest one. I'm the biggest yeah. guy. If he you does forget, forget I would be writing in and saying, Hey, where's my damn t shirt? 
You know, you promised it. So, yes, uh, anybody out there that has a T-shirt or a hat coming, you will get it. Yeah. If, and, if, if, and, you know, you can always just send me an email because I don't check the, the, the messenger. Yeah. Ruth, I, Ruthann at TalkCDL.com. And, yeah. you, and that's dot .com, not dot .life. Yeah. But, but um, I wanted to say that if, if you haven't gotten one and it goes like, say, Six months. <laughs> Six months. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> no, if it go, if it if it literally goes, I don't know, like thirty days, and you didn't get your talk CDL hat, just write to us. You know, you can and you and can you mess- just say like, hey, did 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 I get lost? Yeah. And then like sometimes I actually found envelopes that are ready to be actually stuck in the mail that didn't make it to there. I've done that already. Where like, what are they doing here? Oh, that's what they are. And for you, for you, for everybody that follows us on on the Facebook page, which is like three hundred thirty seven thousand of you, um, we're fighting with Facebook. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say we're fighting. Troy, Troy. Well, you know what? They Facebook is just n- insane. But anyways, you know, if you ever go on there and you don't see our page, it's because they won the fight. So, anyways. Back to trucking, Ruth Ann. We and if that happens, just look on TalkCDL.com and we'll tell you where we're at. Oh, yeah. I so. mean, I, we'll, we'll sneak into the Facebook page on there. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but, you know, it, it is what it is. So, but, yeah, uh, trucking, Ruth Ann. What do you Wait, I still want to say something about Facebook, though. What do you want to say about them? There is evidently a lot of creepy women slash men on Facebook? On, on our Facebook. Like, they'll they'll go in there and... They're truck drivers, Ruth Ann. No, 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 no. The ones that aren't the truck drivers. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. The ones that we have to block because we know they're, they're internet lot lizards that are just looking for unsuspected drivers. Listen, I know. Keeping up with your authority and renewals can be a challenge. As a thank you to Talk CDL listeners, J.J. Caller would like to offer six months of free DOT authority monitoring to a lucky listener. Basically, we'll watch over your authority, send you a monthly report for six months, help you fix anything that falls out of compliance, and renew your MCS 150 form and VMT, as well as file your UCR for free. After six months, you can choose to cancel or continue your service for just $39.99 a month. To enter and for official rules, visit truckingauthority.com slash talk CDL. And they'll, they'll just, all of a sudden, you'll just get a message that says, hey, hi, you're so funny. Well, let's put it this way. If you get a, if you're on Talk CDL's page and you get, let's just say candy, <laughs> right, or Hilga from Switzerland, right, whatever, with with the librarian <laughs> glasses on and the tight sweater, right, in the picture, and she just wants to be friends with you, and she says, message me, I'm, I'm telling you, it probably really isn't the real picture. I can guarantee it's not. I don't think it's Hilga with the big breasts. And, and the, the tight li- sweater. And, and, and the, the librarian glasses. Yeah. And the little mole on the side of her face looking cute. I don't think that's her. It's probably Chester. Seriously. It's probably really a guy that, you know, I don't want to describe the guy in case it's a truck driver. It looks like this. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll be describing it and he'll be like, hey, man, that's me. <laughs> or his wife will be like, hey, Bob, that's you. What are you, are you doing, Bob? Bob? You on the internet sending pictures out? <laughs> are you Hilga? <laughs> no, no, but seriously, I. I uh, I would I I think most of you guys pretty much understand that that's a scam and you ignore them we know that but but you got to remember the truck driver in Atlanta that sent the money that's true. to the chick that was in like the Norwegian uh, army or whatever fighting or not the Norwegian no, wait, it was but in, like, in, in it's over Ar- in the Arabian or something yeah some militant group and she was talking to him on the internet and he sent her like fifteen grand or thirty grand. And then she was supposed to fly to Atlanta, and they were going to be together and get married. And then she called him from the airport in, like, Nigeria or wherever and said, they caught me. I need $15,000 for bail. And he sent another fifteen grand. This was a truck driver, right? And then in the end, he never, ever met her. Number two, he, he, she didn't call him. She, he, she was actually texting him. This guy never, ever, ever talked to her on the phone. And he never seen her, never FaceTimed her, never did anything with this female, which I guarantee you was a guy, all right, 
in Nigeria or in Iraq or wherever the heck he was at, sending pictures and scamming this guy. This guy fell in love with a damn picture and sent like 40 or 50 grand total. How wacky. And look, I'm, I'm not making fun of him, but yes, I really want to. But for all you guys that are getting, you know, you, we ban those. We, we try to catch them real quick. Yeah, we ban the Hilgas. Yeah, we don't want we don't want any of our drivers, be, you know, our driver friends being scammed like that. Or truckers, you know, some truckers are lonely. Well, and I understand that, and and that's perfectly fine. But there's legal type of yeah, you, sites that you can go and actually find a friend and talk to. I mean, heck, the CB is one of them. But you don't want to sit there and and communicate with these these ladies that say hi to every single comment that's made on our site. I'll get blown up and I'll get like 60 messages, like notifications, and it's all that one person saying hi and hey. Yeah, message me. I just want to, can we be friends? It's like, why does a 21 or a 19-year-old chick named Hilga want to be friends with Billy Bob Trucker that's like 61? I mean, honestly, in his flannel shirt. I mean, that doesn't make sense. It no, it, yeah. does, it, it doesn't. It, and I'm not saying that you know no one wants to be your friend there, driver. But you but know, not, Hil- <laughs> Hilga don't want to be. Not know. the one that looks like she belongs in a club. Yeah, <laughs> she belongs on a pole dancing. Okay, I didn't do a kind of club. All right. So what do you got for us today? You have anything for us today? I mean, you were uh, all pumped up on doing the show tonight, and uh, here we are. And who knows? What do well, you? That got? was one of the things I wanted to say about you. You kind of covered both of the stuff I wanted to talk about TNC and yeah. and. Driver harassment on our site, you know. So there's a story that I read on CDL Life. I wanted to actually, I like to, I look for the unique ones. You know what I mean? Like I don't look for Joe. Hence, that's why I'm married to him. I'm a little unique. Yeah. Um, so let's move on. I so <laughs> so I I uh, I look for the unique stories. And CDL Life had put a, a story out this past week. Here's what it's titled. Truck driver weaves tale of kidnapped wife as excuse for smuggling weed into the U.S. I'm sorry, repeat that? Truck driver weaves tale of kidnapped wife as excuse for smuggling weed into the U.S. When he got caught, basically, he told them the reason he was doing it is because his wife has been kidnapped and being held hostage. Weaves? Weaves a story, W-E-A-V-E-S. It's, it says he okay. weaves tale of kidnapped wife. Okay, that's how now they, I got it. Yeah, that's it how literally, I could not figure that out, how, how it was worded. Yeah, now this is a truck driver from Mexico. Okay, he's actually a Mexican citizen. And it says, he told border uh, agents the cartel was holding his wife hostage and forcing him to smuggle drugs. A man has been sentenced to three years in prison after attempting to smuggle weed into the U.S. as a way to save the life of his apparently kidnapped wife. 33-year-old resident of Mexico, Ruben Molinado Espino, pleaded guilty to conspiracy to import and importing more than 1,000 kilograms of marijuana back in July, but received his 36-month prison sentence just this week. However, he is expected to face removal proceedings following the sentence because he's not a U.S. citizen. So they're going to deport him after he's, he's uh, sentenced. Back in May of 2019, Maldonado Espino was attempting to enter the U.S. from Mexico via the World Trade Bridge near Laredo, Texas. When border agents grew suspicious and chose to further inspect the trailer, a canine and non-intrusive imaging system examining was done on the trailer, and officers noticed discrepancies between what they found and and the truck's manifest, which described the shipment as motor vehicle parts. As officers went to open the trailer, Maldonado Espino admitted, You got me! (laughs) He admitted that he knew drugs were inside. The officers then discovered 198 bundles of weed weighing in at 4,600 pounds and a street value of approximately 875 smackaroos. According to the Southern District of Texas arm of the U.S. Attorney's Office, Maldonado Espino then told officers that a Mexican drug cartel was holding his wife hostage and forced him to smuggle the nar- narcotics. Well, think about that. So, like, um, let's use you and I, for example. All right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like, I'm help, s- help, help. 
Hello, who's this? Help. Who is this? Help, help. Who, who is this? It's, it's Ruthann. Ruthann, like, Ruthann, who? We got your wife. We got your wife. And you got to smuggle drugs or we're going to kill her. Jay, kill her. Jay, Jay, help me. Oh. I'd be like, um, okay. Just keep her. Um, <laughs> um. Escobar, I will, um, <laughs> Mr. Escobar, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, you know what? I'm sorry, but, you know, there's lots of women out there, Mr. Escobar. I mean, she was a good woman. I well, mean, here's, here's the thing is, first of all, how would they get me? I don't know. And how would they know you? And all in all is, wouldn't you be more concerned of what they're going to do to your hiney after you just ratted them out? Right, and I would say, listen, Mr. Escobar, it, when I deliver these drugs into the U.S. and then I come to pick my wife up, you're going to kill me. I mean, honestly, Ruth Ann's getting old anyway. She just turned 50, <laughs> right? And this is probably time to trade in anyway, so, you know. Newer model. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, R- Ruth Ann. I mean, I like you. You're all right, but, you know. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyways, so let me read the rest of this. Or okay. did you have something? No, no, no. I, 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 it's after you're done. I'm going to tell them what our adventure is going to be this week. Well, well, this is funny because it goes, authorities then attempted to check the driver's story by calling his wife, who answered the call. <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> Joe's Pizza? <laughs> anyways, <laughs> and appeared to be calm and not under distress. <laughs> Falsely claiming your family is, uh, is being threatened hurts others. Those that actually do have that happen said the district judge in a statement to court. So, honestly and truly, you know, the guy was lying. He used his wife as an excuse. And he thought the U.S. was that stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I think is really dumb? That he actually gave them his wife's phone number. <laughs> Here, check the story out. Yeah. Call it. Go ahead. Here, check it out. Manuela? Or whatever her name is. Kathy? I don't know. Mexican names. It was in Mexico. You're looking at me like I'm a <laughs> whack job or something. <laughs> you are. No, seriously. So they call down there, right? And she answers the phone. And it's like, hold on. I'm making coffee. You know, whatever. It doesn't, it just doesn't even make sense. Why you? Why would you give her your number? Why would you give the police your wife's number? So the next time. We want to check it out. Give us. I'd be like, I'd give you somebody else's number. Somebody that died where the phone don't answer. Well. Like, you would really know that number still, but honestly, when next time they talk, he's going to say, you know, I told you, if there's an American number that calls you, you're supposed to act like there is something wrong. Yeah. And you, that's, see, that's the part, <laughs> that is exactly what would happen to you. You would answer the damn phone, <laughs> right? You, yeah. you would be like, what? There's nothing wrong with me. Kidnapped? What is he told? What's it? You know what? He does this all the time, officers. And yes, just I, keep him. And I will testify that you put him in jail. You put him in jail. He needs to get his butt punished, and he needs to learn his lesson now, or it's just going to keep on going on. Exactly. And then I'm going to be the fall guy, and I'm not going to do that for him. See, that's that's why if the cartel had you, I would. <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be dead. It's, it's not really that big of a deal. Seriously, once a woman gets over 50, I mean, honestly. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't want to go there. All right. I have friends. Yeah, right. That's another lie. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got to tell them, guess what we're going to have for dinner this week? Oh. I what for- we ordered. I forgot about that. See, Troy, for a while, he loves the idea of exotic meats. I do. Oh. He's a meat and potato guy. Yeah. So... I ordered some meats. He ordered some meats from this place. It's called Fossil Farms. Fossil Farms. We'll give them a little plug. I think they're out of, out of Jersey. Oh. That, I think that's, everybody's I think going, that's where oh, they were. Jersey. I think that's where they're from. Okay. But let me tell you, they're really good. Shipping was amazing. Yeah. Like, there's nothing I can complain about. No, they're out of Colorado. No, I thought it was Jersey. No, because all the animals are raised in Colorado. I'm serious. Hey, you know what? That's actually funny. Because if I was from Colorado and you said I was from New Jersey... I wouldn't ship you food anymore. <laughs> now, listen. So, here's what I ordered. <laughs> Ostrich. <laughs> I ordered emu. Mm-hmm. Which, I actually really like them. Emu's good. I like emu and ostrich. Elk. Elk sausage I got. Here's the good ones I got. 
This is going to blow your mind. I got kangaroo, <laughs> a big kangaroo loin. My son's going to smoke it for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got yak. 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 Yeah, but seriously, so we got five different foods, five different meals. And t- here's the bonus I could have got, and I'm not going to get it because I don't think it would be that good. Camel. Seriously, you can order camel. If you go on Fossil Farms website, you can actually order anything you want. Anything that's legal. I think snake. They have snake. They have everything. Not that I would want to eat snake either. Yeah, I don't I don't I'm not I'm not one that was Norton, Northern New Jersey. Yeah. As of June twentieth, we're excited and announced that we are now offering local delivery of all our products to our customers residing in northern New Jersey. Okay, so oh. Oh yeah. But I thought the animals are like a lot of those, like the yaks and stuff, they're like raised in Colorado. It must be, they must have the farms out they're there. They're in Boonton? Boonton? Boonton what? New Jersey. Boonton? B O O N T O N. Boonton? Now, they might have the farms out there and then they have a truck. I could have sworn I read Deliver, that. you know, like they, they could. Track the trailer? They could end up having where, you know, they have all their meats out there on the farm. And then they process them out there, freeze them, and then ship them to yeah, Jersey I for distribution. A yak farming, but yak. I mean, honestly, have you guys ever seen a yak? Looks like a big woolly something. Woolly something. It's like all woolly looking. That's not a mammoth, but it's a big woolly looking cow looking thing. They it's also have like gator and pheasant and stuff like that. And they started in 1997. Okay, so they've been around for 23 years. Yay. So, I mean, they have a lot of different stuff. We'll see how it tastes, and we can let you know then. Because right now we don't know what it actually tastes like. Well, we are going to find out here shortly. Okay, so moving on. Do we have anything else that we wanted to talk about? This was kind of a little mini pod. Do you have a... um, Oh, wait, here we go. Well, I'm hoping everybody has a really great holiday coming up. There was another story I wanted to read. Actually, I forgot about this one. Another weird one. Thieves pose thieves pose as truck drivers in highly sophisticated nut heist. We came for your nuts. <laughs> Seriously, that's that's <laughs> what they did. I mean, literally. And check this out. It says two men are awaiting trial after allegedly posing as truck drivers at a nut distribution center and attempting to steal two hundred thousand dollars worth of pistachios. The attempted robbery occurred July 15th in 2020 in Bakersfield, California. According to the Capitol Press, 32-year-old Armin Karapathan and 30-year-old Manuk Ajahajan. Ajahajan. We won't go there. Ajahajan. That's how you pronounce that. Ajahajan. Showed up to an almond and pistachio distribution center with a stolen semi truck and posed as truck drivers in a theft technique detectives called fictitious pickup, which they described as highly sophisticated. I'm sorry, but did you remember that? Like, if you ever see. You gotta have a, a, you gotta have a set movies. of gonads, though. What nuts? Yeah. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Good. Did you ever see the movie What? Nut Job. It's it's the one with the with the it's a car- kids cartoon movie and that's what they do it's it's like some squirrels and stuff they they are gonna rob this little <laughs> store yeah we seen it with the kids uh, did I see it yeah it was you were probably like playing on your I, computer I probably fell asleep well, I fall asleep on all the kid movies you know that if that are, yeah yeah he's, he's five minutes horrible. in I'm sleeping he's horrible for that but anyways but that's what I thought when you said that the first thing that first thing that popped in my mind was this squirrel character going you know and and yeah anyways look up the movie nut job you'll see what i'm meaning so listen this says detectives say the two men found real truck drivers so they went and found real truckers on facebook and used their names uh, so so it's an identity theft then on top of that i know but it's like I th- well, we got to at least get real trucker names. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. You could have just <laughs> used Bob Smith. I mean, well, <laughs> so the two printed realistic looking stickers for the trucks and created forged paperwork all while using prepaid burner cell phones. However, thanks to the tra- to training for growers and processors over the last few years, the company was able... To you know, this is actually a big thing. It must be. Yeah, it used they to. Have training. Yeah, uh, there. I actually read about this a, a year or two ago, where 
trucking or uh, people would literally make up false manifests and orders yeah, shipping I've heard orders, of that. right? And they'll and you know if you catch the wrong guy at the wrong time. You know what I mean? Not paying attention to his job at a at a shipping house, at a, you know, at a warehouse. You may be able to get. A, I'm sure it's happened. They've gotten away with loads before. Well, but you gotta sorry. have you gotta have some real nerve though to show up. And see, to me, breaking into a place with, that's not open is a lot less stressful than walking into a place and going, "Yeah, we're here to pick up the million dollar load." That's uh, yeah, yeah, for that's us. Yeah, yeah, we're the real, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but that's that's a, it, I, it. It kills me. That, that takes some nerve. You know what I mean? To stand there and look people in the eye and go, "Yeah, I'm here for the uh, two trucking orders." Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm here for my nuts. Yeah, I'm here for the pistachios. Um, are they ready? I mean, that's this. <laughs> and, and pistachios. I mean, honestly, I like you, I like my, my I, I do like pistachios. Is there a black market for pistachios? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I mean, like. Pistachios, yes, they're an expensive nut. I could see TVs. But macadamias are really, like, expensive, too. So, I mean, I'm not hmm. quite figuring out why you're cornering the pistachio Where market. Where do you take... I mean, I know if you steal, like, a new Dodge Demon or a, a new Chevy Camaro, <laughs> you, there's millions of chop shops that you could find that would probably take that in. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I, exactly. But I'm trying to think, where does... Where, where, do you, do, where do you find the pistachio underground warehouse? Yeah, what do you find that? What, what did they say it was? <laughs> two hundred thousand? What was it? What was two hundred thousand dollars worth of pistachios? What, what do you What do you go with that? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Where Where's the highly elaborated underground conspired pistachio processing plant? Exactly. You know, like who, who's gonna? I mean, I, I'm, I'm still stuck on trying to figure out. I mean. Like almonds, they make almond butter and, and all that other stuff, and almond milk. So well, they, I mean, they were dumb to begin with. I mean, pistachios. Let's, <laughs> let's rob this. Let's go and rob them pistachio place. I'm sure we can get a lot of money for that. I mean, guys, stick to electronics. You know, maybe if you're, if you're a thief out there stealing, I, I, I'm just saying I don't know that the market for pistachios is all that big in the theft world. I I I, I, I can't figure that either. So here's what my my guess is going to be. All right, I got a theory. So they wanted to start their own business as roasted pistachios. You know, like those ones that you can go at the little, they have like the little cinnamon coated nuts and stuff at these They're little. They're going to corner the pistachio market. What, what they wanted to do is start their own little bit business, right? Why don't they just But the startup like costs were too much. So what they decided to do was just hijack a, a, a tractor trailer full of pistachios and then they were going to go ahead and start roasting them and doing, you know, the sugar coating and oh, stuff like that. Oh, maybe they're just going to make... Pis- the, what, are the, what do you make with pistachios? Uh, like, see, that's, you don't even... Like, you don't even make trail pies. Mix. Or, you don't make pies with them, do you? Mm, no. You don't make... I mean... You, you don't... They, you don't, you don't, you don't, don't do much with... On, you just eat them, you right? just eat them. So, like, if they were, like, maybe a pecan farm, they could have, like, maybe went into the pecan pie business. Well, they, that's what I'm saying. That's why I was so... They'd have been this, better this off stealing like post-it notes or something. I mean, paper clips. I mean, no, I, you still have more uses with those what things. What does a pistachio do for you? But constipate you. Well, no. You, <laughs> does, does it constipate you? Do you get constipated from pistachios? I get a bellyache when I eat too many of them. I, I know, love but them, now but that you brought it up, the toxil the toxidiolians are actually saying, Ruth Ann, do you have a pooping problem? Yes, yes, I do. Oh, no. <laughs> no, they're going, oh, my gosh. I can't believe these guys are going there. All right. So, no, anyways, my advice to any thief. See, it's it's hard to make a thief smart. <laughs> First of all, they're thieves. Right. I mean, it's, it. I mean. Or as Hunter used to say, a thief. Yeah. When they're, when they're, that was funny. That was funny. But, so, when we, we uh, look at different thieves, I mean, a guy that's a jewel thief, maybe, I mean, there's diamonds, you know, your gun rare thieves, gems, gun thieves. Guns. I mean, things like yeah. things that really you can get rid of fast. But uh, pistachio. I mean, I'm still stuck on that. Yeah, I mean, weird. like I said, almonds and stuff. You have almond milk, almond butter. You can do a lot with almonds. You have your smoked almonds. You have. Right, but, but the pistachios. Pistachios is just a really small thing you can do with pistachios. Just like, I mean, macadamias. Uh, you get more out of them. You can eat them as they are, or you. Bake with them. I mean, I, I wouldn't even want to be in prison for that. 
I mean, can yeah. you imagine like yeah. everybody's sitting around like the card table and prison yeah. with mm-hmm. their tattoos, you know yeah. what I mean? What and their shivs. Here? They yeah. got they all have their little shivs sticking out their shirt, right? And their hooch or what you know, I s I'm just picturing prison life. And everybody's like, Yeah, man, I I got three black tears on my eye, man. Yeah, who Yeah, what are you doing here for? I, I stole pistachios. You what? P- pistachios? Um <laughs> Yo. Exactly. That's it. it, it can, can you imagine that? They would make me pull out my pockets. Because <laughs> I, I think in prison, that's a sign that you're somebody's biatch. <laughs> so you have to pull your pockets out, and then you have to... I don't or, know. Or you so have to you're p- telling me what they do, no, do in you prison. Remember, that, trying remember to that show, Oz, when oh, like, he had Oz. to like walk around holding the guy's pocket because he was his bunny or whatever? I don't even know. I'm just saying. I mean, that would... A pistachio thief. There's no way you could be anything else. But I thought you would be named a lot of things. I mean, think about it. They could come up with a lot of jokes for that. Well, I know you would get made fun of too, but you would be on the lower end of everything. I mean, honestly, they're <laughs> the only one lower than you probably would be like a child pervert. I mean, other than that, it's, I don't, I can't see being any more of. There's like no status for being a, a nut thief. Just saying. Anyways, they they would call around going, "Hey, nutty." <laughs> yeah. All right, so look, we're just kind of... He's so crazy. He's so nuts. Yeah, he's just nuts. <laughs> anyway, so that's Talk CDL this week. Ruthann, do you have um, anything else? I mean, is there anything else going on in trucking world for these people? I know, let me just say this, and here's the other thing that I actually did want to mention. Um, you know, obviously, we're on the phone with um, trucking companies and, and different people. You know, that's what we who we talk to all week long. And uh, I've been talking to some trucking companies that are literally, I think they're scared. And, and because of the lockdowns and all this other stuff that's going on. And one trucking company in particular was telling me the other day, he said, man, he said, I'm actually afraid to even get another truck and try to hire another truck driver. He said, because uh, the shippers that he deals with are having a hard time right now. And, you know, back, remember when the lockdowns, Remember when everything like blew up in March and in the beginning year when it really got nasty and like Tyson, all the like Tyson chicken and toilet paper. Remember, that was the big thing, toilet paper and also the crap um, (laughs) goes with toilet paper. (laughs) But anyways, but so um, he said, man, it's getting rough and it's going to get rough because people right now, you know, we were talking to a trucking company in Minnesota the other day. They said half of their staff is at home with the COVID, mm-hmm. right? That's what they said. I mean, look, um, you know, it is what it is. Whether this is a real thing or not, people are scared. And when people are scared, they result to, you know... Crazy things. Cra- exactly. Anxiety, stress, all that crap. And so, you know, you guys out there, you know, keep praying. I mean this because, you know, we, we're all in this together in the trucking industry. You know, we're all going to get through this together. And I mean this sincerely. You know, I feel for um, people that are out of work, people, you know, it's... There's a lot of work out there, but yet there's a lot of people hurting for work. You know, small businesses, we heard a report the other day that 16,000 uh, small businesses like uh, bars, uh, sal- salons, gyms, and that, and just in the city of Houston. This is now this is what we were told from a guy that actually is, uh, you know, a pretty high-up dude in Houston. And he said 16,000 businesses just in the city of Houston have gone out of business. So, you know, that... That if you just take that city and times it by how many cities in the United States, that, that should give you an idea how much the country is actually hurting over all this garbage that's going on. And, you know, my prayers are for everybody out there. I hope people are getting through this. Um, but hang in there because we may have a, a rough road over the next couple of months. And, I'm, and look, I would say just stay positive. I get up and go to work every day thinking that it's going to be good. I do. You know, tell them, right? I get up positive every week and then by the end of the week i'm going ah, this sucks but at the same time you know i get up and i put in a full day's work like i i always do do i not i put a full day's work in and i and it's been like that for quite a long time to where you get up and you you go to work thinking you know there's a big you know you're you're gonna be successful and it's hard to be successful when the rest of the world is lying low. So I would just tell everybody, man, just hang in there. Don't get depressed. I mean this sincerely. Do yeah, not get Yeah, because we have a friend in Michigan that just said that they all have the uh, COVID there, not the flu in flu season. 
Right. So. Yeah. He he said he told us he said everybody in Michigan is diagnosed with the COVID nineteen. Not one person in the flu season has the flu. That's what he told me. So you know, really, yeah. let's just keep our heads up, keep going through. Yeah. There's going to be a light at the end of this tunnel, and we just got to keep pressing. I have the word of the day. Yeah, and that word of the day is from Word Genius. Just so yes. you know, Word Genius, that's our big plug at the end of this podcast is for Word Genius. If you want to get a word sent to you every day, a new word, and actually, Ruth, it's more than one word you get, don't you? I get a word every day, but then I'll get, like, sometimes I'll get, like, um, which one of these are all cinnamons of this word? Like, it's like little quizzes. It's actually really cool. If you want to broaden your vocabulary... You know, um, check out Word Genius. It's actually kind of fun. They'll, they'll send you words that you never heard of. Believe me, I promise you 99% of the words, unless you're a super genius trucker, unless you're one of them super truckers, okay, I guarantee you, you've never heard of 99% of these words because I'm a super trucker and I never did. So anyways, Jeez. what's the word, Ruth? You ready? Hmm. Uh. She does this every time. Ratiocinate. 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 It's it's obviously doing. Ratiocinate. So it's uh, the the innate means it's doing something. So what what is the definition of ratiocinate? Form judgments by a process of logic or reason. That's that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That's almost like rationalizing. Exactly. So but it's ratiocinate. Ratiocinate means to form, form judgments form by a, a process of logic. And a judgment means f- form your final, you know, your conclusion mm-hmm. on something by what? Ratiocinate. No, but you're forming it based on what? Form judgments by a process of logic. Or? The number two definition is reason so so either reasoning or or logic um no one is formed judgments by a process of logic the second definition just is reason oh okay reasoning right okay so the examples in a sentence is to solve the murder mystery game you must ratiocinate through all the clues don't make a snap judgment stop and ratiocinate first yeah, so you have to use reason, reasoning, mm-hmm. and logic. Right. That's how you have and to. And you drivers can come and use that word in almost anything that you want to say to your dispatcher. And, and, and I'm just going to say the opposite of that is quick trigger. You're you're already judging somebody by the time the words come out of their mouth. You know, we were talking about this today in church, and what we were talking about was. People, if let's, for example, let's say you have a a friend, guys, let's say you have a friend and he's married, right? And let's say they end up getting a divorce or they're splitting up. Well, your friend that you're good friends with is going to come to you and he's going to say, well, she's a rotten piece of garbage and she's always doing this and she's doing that. And then, of course, in your conversation, you're going to be defending your friend. You're going to say, yes, she's this, she's that. I know she's that. She's this kind of person, blah, blah, blah. But in the meantime, she goes to her friends. And what she's saying to her friends, he's this, he's that, he's a piece of garbage, blah, blah, blah. And all her friends are saying, what a piece of garbage he is. So everybody forms their opinion or their judgment based on what? Bias. Based on their friendship. Based on... Honestly, one side of the story and not ratiocinating or whatever the heck that word was. <laughs> okay, you're not using logic. You're not using um, reasoning. reasoning. Honestly, that's, and, and that's what people got. If, if you ever really want to, that's why like a real judge, they're not allowed to have a case. They're not supposed to have a case that they know the people, they have relation to the people. It's it can't be anything biased at all or they have to literally excuse themselves from the case. So if we would judge that same way in all of our lives, like when some your buddy comes to you and goes, "My wife's a rotten piece of garbage." Well, if you said to him, "Hold on, let's get your wife here in the same room and let's work this out. And let's see if she really is a piece of garbage. Let's get a real final judgment on this situation." Guess what? Probably be a lot less uh, of uh, false conclusions. Ruthann, what do you got? Um, Look like you're lost. 
Well, I was going to say something. I kind of forgot. Were was, you going to ratiationate? Ratiationate? I was, I was, well, I, I was going to say, because you said about the judge. I said, that's why a lot of the people, mm-hmm. when they have certain cases, they'll take it out of the area because they don't want to have any prejudgment made on the, yeah. the person that they're trying. Exactly. You know, just because, just because somebody might have a bad reputation doesn't, you know, you've got to use logic. You've got to use all the evidence. It's got to be based on all that for it to be fair. So you must ratiocinate. Ratiocinate, guys and gals. And you truck drivers, you should ratiocinate before you quit your jobs. Because <laughs> we know. I was just telling somebody today, you look in the newspaper, what do you see? 99% of the jobs, CDL jobs, CDL jobs, and nurses. Other than that, just regular jobs. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.